Here's one of its extraordinary insights. We are heading into a future dominated by inherited wealth as capital concentrates in fewer and fewer hands, giving the very rich ever greater power over politics, government, and society. Patrimonial capitalism is the name for it, and it has potentially terrifying consequences for democracy. For those who work for a living, the level of inequality in the U.S., writes Piketty, is probably higher than in any other society at any time in the past, anywhere in the world. Over three decades, between 1977 and 2007, 60 percent of our national income went to the richest 1 percent of Americans. No wonder this is the one book, the 1 percent, doesn't want the other 99 percent to read. Paul Krugman has been writing extensively and generously about Piketty's book. The Nobel Prize-winning economist and New York Times columnist calls it a tour de force, a magnificent sweeping meditation on inequality that will change both the way we think about society and the way we do economics. As scholar, author of many books, and widely read columnist and blogger, Paul Krugman has himself changed a lot of thinking on politics and economics. Welcome back. Hi. Inequality has been on the table for a long time. You've written extensively. Others have, too. I mean, it's, it's a, a familiar issue. But what explains that this book has now become a phenomenon? Actually, a lot of what we know about inequality actually comes from him because he's been an invisible presence behind a lot. So when you talk about the 1%, you're actually, to a large extent, reflecting mm -hmm. his prior work. But what he's really done now is he said, even those of you who talk about the 1%, you don't really get what's going on. You are living in the past. You're living in the 80s. You think that Gordon Gekko is the future. And Gordon Gekko is a bad guy. He's a predator, but he's a self-made predator. And right now, what we're really talking about is we're talking about Gordon Gekko's son or daughter. We're talking about inherited wealth playing an ever-growing role. So he's telling us that we are on the road not just to a highly unequal society, but to a, a society of uh, an oligarchy, a society of inherited wealth, patrimonial capitalism. And he does it with enormous amount of documentation, and it's, it's a revelation. I mean, even for someone like me, it's a revelation. I was going to ask, what, did, what does Paul Krugman have to learn from this, this book? Even the title, the first word in the title, capital, we stopped talking about capital. Even people like me stopped talking about capital because we thought it was all about human capital. We thought it was all about earnings. We thought that the wealthy were people who one way or another found a way to, to make a lot of money. Right. Um, and we knew that that wasn't always true. We knew that in, in the Gilded Age or in the Belle Epoque in Europe, which he prefers to talk about, the, that, that uh, high incomes were mostly the result of having lots and lots of assets. But we sort of said, well, that's not the way things work anymore. And he says, oh, yeah? It turns out that you're wrong, that it's true that right now a lot of high incomes in America are people who didn't start out all that rich, but we're rapidly moving towards a state where inherited wealth dominates. I didn't know that. I really was, I should have known it. I should have thought about it, but I didn't. And so then here, here comes this book with, I mean, it's, 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 it's beautiful. It happens to be analytically beautiful, if that makes any sense at all. Yes, to the I, as you know, I'm no economist, but I found this book, as I said in the opening, just yeah. very readable, and suddenly there'd be this moment of epiphany. Yeah, it's a real eureka book. You suddenly say, oh, this is not, the world is not the way I saw it. The world, in fact, has moved on a long way in the last 25 years and not in a direction you're going to like because we are seeing not only great disparities in income and wealth, but we're seeing them get entrenched. We're seeing them become uh, inequalities that will be transferred across the generations. Uh, we are becoming very much the kind of society we imagine we're nothing like. Here's Piketty's main point. Capital tends to produce real returns of 4 to 5 percent, and economic growth is much slower. What's the practical result of that? What that means is that if you have a large fortune, suppose that our family has a large fortune, they can, the inheritors of that large fortune, can live very, very well. They can live extraordinary standard of living and still put a large fraction of, that, of the income from that fortune aside, and the fortune will grow faster than the economy. So the big dynastic fortunes tend to take an ever-growing share of total national wealth. So once you, when you have a situation where the returns on capital are pretty high and the growth rate of the economy is not that high, you have a situation in which not only can people live well off inherited wealth, but they can actually 
pass on to the next generation even more, an even higher share. So it's all, in his terms, R, the rate of return on capital, and G, the rate of growth of the economy. And, and when you have a high R, low G economy, which is what we now have, then you're talking, not, you're talking about a situation in which dynasties come increasingly to dominate the, the top of the economic spectrum. And then a tiny fraction of the population ends up very dominant. What's the realistic impact of this on working people? There's a direct impact, which is that part of income is always going to go to labor, although that seems to be a diminishing fraction, but the part that comes from capital is going to be in the hands of a very few people. Mm -hmm. The other thing, which I think is critically important, he talks about more towards the end of the book, is the political economy. That when you have, that's what Teddy Roosevelt could have told you and did, that when you have a few people who are so wealthy, that they can effectively buy the political system. The political system is going to tend to serve their interests. And, and that is going to reinforce this shift of income and wealth towards the top. Do you agree with him that we are drifting toward oligarchy? Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't think that's even, I, I don't see that there's any question of it. If you look at the, um, certainly if you look at what we, what we know already, and we're, we're learning more, but we know already about the concentration of income, of wealth, uh, you can see that it is growing. You can see that, and you can actually see, I spent a little while just sort of going through the Forbes 400 list. And what you find is already, uh, there's an awful lot of inherited wealth in there. It's no longer a, a list of self-made men. And of the self-made men, a lot of them are pretty elderly. And uh, those fortunes are going to be passed on to uh, next generation. So no, we, the drift to, towards oligarchy is very visible, both casual observation and in the numbers.